The PTP programs, putting together the pieces programs, are designed to incorporate several topics into a larger realistic programming project. This programming project will walk you through the program development cycle for calculating a team's winning average. This is based on exercise 101 on page 47 of your textbook, putting together the pieces program 1, calculating a winning average. Recall the program development cycle from Chapter 1, Section 2. The first step is to analyze the task and then define the problem in English. Here is the result. A complete problem description. Write a program that reports a team's winning percentage. The program needs to ask the user for the name of a team, the number of games won, and the number of games lost. The program should display the name of the team and the percentage of games won. Step 2 in the program development cycle is design. We need to plan a step-by-step -step algorithm for solving the programming problem. We will use the IPO chart strategy, organizing our program solution by using the input processing output, or IPO, approach. This will provide us with a well-structured plan. The first step in our design phase will be to identify what outputs must be generated by the program. The two required outcomes are 1. Report the name of the team and 2 report the team's winning percentage. Let's record those in our output box. It's important to have clearly defined goals before tackling any problem or task. It is good programming practice to determine the names for the variables right now and use these identifiers in our design documentation, our IPO chart so that we are consistent throughout the program development cycles design, coding, and documentation. Remember Python's naming rules and that these identifiers are case sensitive. Notice the use of camel case notation for easy readability as well as the use of descriptive names for these variables. Next, we examine the narrative to determine what inputs will be given to the program and where they will come from. We expect the user of this interactive program to provide the team name, the number of games won, and the number of games lost. Our next step is to determine exactly what we have to do to produce the output requirements. You can start thinking about this step as a giant subtraction. It will help us identify what our program is going to need to produce. The team name output is given to us as an input, so no processing needed for that output. However, we will have to produce the winning percentage output. Here is a critical question. Given the input's number of games won and number of games lost, do we have enough information to produce the required output winning percentage? Yes, we do. We need to write the formula to compute the winning percentage based on games won divided by games played. We didn't get games played as an input but we did get games won and games lost. We can add these together to get the number of games played. Note that this would not work for a sport that awards ties. In that case, we would need to be given another piece of information in order to correctly determine the winning percentage. It would be helpful to work that out before we started coding a solution. 
In that case, we actually need to redefine the problem description to include that piece of information as input. Okay, back to our business at hand. Here is the formula for our winning percentage calculation. Winning percentage equals games won divided by paren games won plus games lost n paren. Note that we need a set of parentheses here so that the addition is done before the division. Now that should work given that there are no ties. Here's our almost complete IPO chart. Let's take the time to consider the data types before we start coding. What do you think the type should be for team name? String because it's text information. How about games won? Int. Integer would be the best choice since it's a whole number count. Whenever we are counting, we should be using integer type numbers. How about games lost? Yes, that should be integer too. What about winning percentage? If you said floating point number, that's correct. Percentages are almost always floating point numbers. Okay, we are ready to move to step three in the program development cycle, coding. Here is a Python program shell for coding the solution. Notice the liberal use of comments. You should always include your name, date, and the program description at the top. It's also good to list the name of the file. You should add comments to each section of the program as we see here. It will help us translate the design into the Python code we need. You should download and open the Winning Percentage Shell program as we work through Phase 3, Coding. Here is our starting shell. Let's do a Save As right away. So if we need to come back to the starting shell, we can. So let's Save As Winning Percentage and let's name it complete. Our first step is that we need to get the user input for the team name, games won, and games lost. We decided on the variable team name for the name of the team and we can set that to the input from what is the team's name. Now notice a few things about this line of code. First, I chose to use double quotes for the string. The reason is I have a single quote in there in the word teams. If I chose to use single quotes to delineate the string, it would confuse Python when it got to the single quote in the word teams. So I am using the double quotes for the string. The second thing to note is I've left a blank after the question mark. Why? So when this is presented to the user and they start typing the name of the team, it is not smacked up against the question mark, but there's a little bit of space there for clarity. The next input we need is games one. Now we decided 
that this input should be an integer. Remember that Python does input and output as strings. So we need to identify this as an int so that Python will translate the number the user types in from a string into an integer number. And then we need the games lost. Again, this is an integer, so we need to direct Python to translate that string input into an integer. Remember to use two parentheses at the end, one to close the input function, the other to close the int function. That's all of our inputs. Now that we have our inputs, we can do our calculation to compute the winning percentage. The winning percentage equals games one divided by the addition of games one plus games lost. Now without the parentheses, games one would be divided by games one. And that would just give us a value of 1. And then we would add to that the number of games lost. So we have to remember the order of operations for arithmetic and include the parentheses around the divisor. OK, that's all we need for the processing piece. Now we need to write the output piece. I'm going to start with an empty print. And this will separate the inputs from the outputs. I'm going to create a string called print result and assign that to the team name. have a formatted percentage for winning. You will find the formats in Chapter 2, Section 3 of the text, if you need to review them. The format I'm using will allow for two digits after the decimal point for our floating point number for winning average. It will also append the percent sign. So by using this format, our output should be neatly printed to the screen. Finally, I'm going to print print result using the format function for winning percentage. Okay, so the format will be applied 
to the winning percentage floating point number when the results are printed to the screen. Okay, let's save that with Control S. and run it. Notice we have an error. Let's take a look at this. It seems we forgot a quotation mark around the second part of the string. Let's add that. And now I think we're good to go. Save it and run it again. So the input prompt asks for the team's name. And I've grown up a Phillies fan, but this part of it's going to pain me a bit. They've won 60 games, but they've lost 74 games. The output tells us that the Phillies have a 44.78% winning average. Not a good year for the Phillies. Let's just recap what we've done in this program. We've worked out Programming Problem 101 from page 47 in your text. We had three inputs, the name of a team, the number of games they won, and the number of games they lost. When we collect input in a Python program, the input always comes in as string or text data. If we need to do calculations or arithmetic with any of those inputs, we have to put them into the proper number type. In this case, games won and games lost our counting numbers, whole numbers, are defined to be ints in Python. So we use the int function to translate that input into a type of int number. We calculate the winning percentage by dividing the number of games won by the total games played. Since we didn't have the total games played as a separate input, we calculated that by adding the number of games won to the number of games lost, giving us the total games played. Finally, we print the results by creating a string print result that consists of the string literal the string concatenation, the team name, string concatenation, the rest of the string, with a format embedded. The format has 0 colon 5.2 followed by a percent sign. The 0 says we don't need any leading columns. 5.2 tells Python how big the field number should be with how many digits go after the decimal point and following that up with a percent sign. We then print that string using the format function with an input of winning percentage. The winning percentage will replace that format code and display the number 44.78 with two digits after the decimal point and the percent sign included. If you have any questions regarding this, please post them to the forum. Happy coding!